G'day and welcome to Surfing Life Radio. We'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this Yugen Bear speaking country and pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging. I'm Ray from Surfing Life and my co-host is Matt Granger from Manly Surf School. And we are going to get into some of your other programs now. You've got your Surfers Gym and we've got Surfers Compass, that's right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Surfers Compass is like a technique breakdown app. And technique breakdown app. And I we'll mean, that's what you need, isn't it? You need yeah. something on your phone yep. that you can look at at any time of the day. You could be waiting for a bus. Yep. Not that I wait for buses these days. But you could, you know, there's so much downtime and you can and be looking at your app. And then we've got movements, movement and strength training movements just for surfing like just for bottom turns top turns so right. it's relatable and then breathing mindset breathing also bring down anxiety big waves being able to hold your breath when you're pounded i can't hold my breath by the way i went to do my dive ticket and you had to go get a medical yeah and then and the doctor says oh i did the blow in the thing and yeah. he goes you're gonna have to give that another go. <laughs> I almost failed my medical. I'll, I'll get you there. You'll got, get me there. I got my yeah. I just did my apnea um, training course. Yeah, nice with apnea um, surf apnea. Yeah. So that's been fun. I've been running. I only have sleep apnea, not surf apnea. But yeah, that's it's pretty cool, eh? It's just Jedi mind techniques we use. Yeah. It's actually not your lung capacity; it's your mind. Yeah, right. So trying to override the mind because you got plenty of oxygen in the system. Yeah. So yeah, that. Well, that's what they say to, to, for the, you know, when someone uh, are unconscious or whatever, they've had a heart attack or whatever, mm. and you're going to give them CPR, you don't breathe f- in their mouth first. Yeah. You pump the chest first. Pump the chest. We because there's already there's oxygen, oxygen in, in the blood. There, already there. Yeah. You so we got to get it round. We do this drill where you look at an oximeter mm. and you've got it on your finger. Mm-hmm. And you, we say, have a look when you need to really need to breathe and how much oxygen you got 98 percent. stop it yeah so wow. so it's just your brain we do have this switch in our brain that we have to breathe obviously it's important it's very important <laughs> um but if you can override that urge that's really? that, that's the t- ticket yeah yeah that's, and, that's an incorrect like 98 percent oxygen still in your blood yeah and then you look at another thing we work on in the drills and also we go through the theory um, we work at, you know, you've got 10 second periods, five second periods, 25 sec you know, a big one, you know. Yeah. I've been to Nazare and surf 60 foot and that's a, a, a heavy wipeout there is about 20 seconds. Yeah. Feels like two hours because it's very violent. Right. But it's all in your mind because we've got this perception of time, you know. So it's, it's learning how to switch off when you're in that breath hold. Well, so we got distraction techniques and see, that's perfect. stuff like that. I, I remember embarrassingly. So I'll get you, bro. You I'll get, get I'll get you after three well, minutes, easy. You're t- telling me at 26 <laughs> at Nazare. I, embarrassingly, I had a GoPro on my board one day, and I was out there catching clips, and I wiped out. And I remember thinking, Yeah, there you go. I remember thinking, I'm gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah There you go. And then I got home. I pulled the footage off. And I saw how many seconds from wipeout to me coming up. Yeah. What do you reckon? It was like, it was six seconds. Six seconds, yes. Yes. <laughs> it was madness. And I thought I'm dead. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? So, so good. So that's, that's really so interesting. So I do that. I even do that. Yeah, I teach beginners that, intermediates and advanced. So I'll be out the back with a bunch of, um, I had a bunch of beginners the other day and they were like so scared. It was two foot. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, just everyone, let's hold your breath. Everyone ready, set, go. Take a breath in. And I counted to 20. And I said, that was a Nazare wipeout, a 60-footer. It's two foot right now. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to survive. You're not going to die. Yeah. You're just making up stories in your head about the future that doesn't even exist. Yeah, right. So that's all it is. So That's yeah. important. We do a full day. And once you've done the full day, then we do our drills. Yeah, it's um, our mentor is Jason Rice from up here he's a legend so he's devoted his whole life to breath breath work and so i'm training under him and yeah we run out of the surface gym so doing that because breath breath is really important in surfing isn't it oh it's so important i think it's one of the most unless it's free diving Mm. it's got to be and now yeah and that's the thing about surfing so free diving so i've trained in free diving and 
this surf apnea we're doing where it's totally different. So free diving, you're calm, you're chilled. Yeah, you can be calm. You get in that relaxed state and then you go breath and, and go down. down. We're Slowly, just Slowly. We paddle easy. into a wave. Well, Next no, thing, you're in a barrel, clip an edge, yeah. go over the falls yeah. and just get violently flogged yeah. and just go, what is happening to me? That's it. So and that's the difference. That's the difference. So we you sp- expend so much energy yeah. and oxygen paddling in hard, especially if it's a bigger day. Yeah. You're already a bit puffed because you've been yeah. duck diving under half a dozen. Exactly. And then you get smoked. And then you Surely think it's the end of the... you'd have less oxygen, though, at that point. Um, it's actually... The CO2's build up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but the oxygen level hasn't actually gone down yet. It hasn't changed. Yeah, not much. But so CO2 is actually the trigger to tell you to breathe. Yeah, right. So we do CO2 stress drills. So we'll be on a like an assault bike... Or we do burpees, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you got to hold your breath, and you only last five, ten seconds. So you get your heart rate up really high, it's, and it's don't you never do this in water because you'll drown, you'll black out. <laughs> yeah. So we get you get you in that really stressed state. Yeah. So we do twenty seconds on the bike. You got a twenty second rest. Yeah. Hold your breath. Do that eight times. That's eight gnarly wipeouts. Yeah, right. So once you start doing that, you can go further and further and further, and you start realizing that you can go further. It's a CO, and you realize it's a CO two building up. It's just so it's, it's a so game trigger. changer. Yeah. Wow. So then we do. Then we go in the pool and we do swimming drills. Yep. Um, but mate, for surfing, we yep. do other ones where you put a leggy on and we tow you underwater for twenty meters. Classic. So that's like a na- gnarly one at um, <laughs> cloud break. <laughs> yeah. You know. Then we do a tumbling drill. You swim to your partner and we tumble you underwater. Yeah. yeah. So you don't, you're disorientated and then you kind of give them a little pat on the back and then they've got to swim another 10, 20 metres. Do that eight times, you know, like you build up to it, obviously. Yeah. And then that just gets you that that um, confidence. Yeah, then you go and wipe out and you just like... Psh. Yeah, so I just have a sleep under there when I get pounded. <laughs> I just basically cl- close my arms over like I'm... Because I do jiu-jitsu yeah. and um, been doing that for 20 years and... It's like someone trying to armbar you. So yeah, I just right. protect my shoulders because uh, most of the big wave injuries, you pop your shoulder because it's the yeah. worst joint in the world, as we know, yeah. worst designed. And um, just have a little snooze and just let the chaos happen. And then it's all over and you're like, oh, cool. <laughs> it reminds me of, um, was it Storm Chasers with Ross Clark Yeah, Jones Ross and Tom. And Tom and, and uh, Ross would say he had... He, just pretend he was yeah, at a disco, disco with all yeah. the girls around him. Yeah. That was so funny. Yeah. It's it's changing your mindset. And this is a funny story. We're towing in out German banks one day, me and the captain, and there were some whales out to sea. Huh. So we went out to check the whales out. We cut the motors because we know the rules and just let them swim to us, these humpbacks. And we were mm. like, they were probably about a K and a half out to sea. Mm. And we just, they're swimming under us. Wow. We're going, wow, this is sick. It was like a 12-foot day, like 25-foot faces. Yeah. Then we're coming back in. We'd been surfing for about two hours and we were kind of scared. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, like we'd been real, you know, you know, coming off the bottom, not trying to go any near, where near the lip, not yeah. trying to really get tubed. Yeah. And then we're coming in and then I had the tow board in the gunnels and I'm on the back, my mate's driving and this bomb set, we're coming back to the waves from the, from the whales because the whales yeah. were right near the, right near the break. Out the sea, this is out of Bommie in Long Reef. Yeah. So we're coming in, and I said, Oh, mate, I'm going to body surf this because I can't really surf. This is an epic, it's probably set of the day. Yeah. My mate's going, Oh, you're tripping as if. And, and I said, Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to body surf, like toe in body surf. Yeah. Because I couldn't really do a step off. Yeah. Because the board's five kilos, right? If I do a step off, I'm just going to sink. Sink, yeah. So we're getting close, getting close. He's going, yeah, You're going to do it? I'm going to do it? Oh, no. And he goes, You got it. You said it. Okay. So I just <laughs> launched off the ski into the barrel. Um, lucky I went feet first uh. and the barrel just went over me, got destroyed, came back up, wasn't that bad. Then, then there's another set behind it and I pretended, I said, watch this. And I started like pretending, pretending to, yeah. to body surf the phone yeah, yeah, and they yeah. just grabbed my legs and just took me for another hundred meters. <laughs> then another one. And then Tommy Carroll comes out and he goes, what are you idiots doing? I said, that's a new sport. It's called toe in body, uh, toe in body surfing. You should try it. And then my mate Captain had to go. He did the full skim, jumped off, hands behind the back, skimmed down the wave, and then just got destroyed. But anyway, the moral of the story: went back out on the board after yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And it was, it felt like three foot. Yeah, you could, you could go switch, for it. We switched yeah, our switch brains. Mindset. So if you switch your mind to have fun, yeah, 
like in the wipeout like Ross does is in a nightclub with all the girls. Yeah. That's the trick. Yeah. That's the Jedi mind trick. Yeah, because you were body surfing in it. You weren't you weren't away from the waves. Yeah. You were so deep in getting hammered. The turmoil. Yeah. That and when you got on a board, basically away from the white water felt predominantly. E- felt easy. It's just easy. And we'll, of course, we we're laughing and joking too. Train the whole yeah. your whole body chemistry. So now, yeah, was it Benji? Was it Benji Weatherall that used to say, "If you laugh at the wave, mm. you start laughing." Yeah, laugh at the wipeout when laughing, it's about to get caught get, inside. Before he gets you, you start laughing yeah, at it. It's the it's the best thing ever. Apparently, you get more oxygen, or it just changes. The, I think it changes your chemistry. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you don't. You don't. You're not stressing. That's um, it. And like. 30% of your brain, um, 30% of your oxygen has been taken up by your brain, just by your thoughts. Stop it. Yeah. So if you can calm the brain down. Stop it. So that's another trick too. So if you you laugh. See, or your you're brain rel- takes. See, I yeah. did not know this. So that's the stress. So when you're in the breath hold, you're going, oh, this is heavy. This is heavy. Oh, oh, oh. Am I going to drown? I'm going to die. Well, that's my so, problem. So then you just <laughs> you just chewed all this oxygen up out of, out of your blood. By thinking. By thinking. So if you can close your eyes and just do nothing ah. and be full zen and just block it all out, have a little snooze. Wow. And if you take a big breath, you're gonna actually come up. Like you got you got like you know, you've got um inflation vests in your in your lungs. If yeah, you take yeah. a big breath and hold, yeah. you're gonna come up. But if you don't have a good breath, you're not gonna you're gonna sink, you know. It's Whereas gonna be trickier. So there's all these kind of little tricks. But you tri- generally do have a good breath. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And the new thing with this and that, but you've got to um just you know that you're actually going to come up. You know? Now, if there's no, if there's, <laughs> if there's people listening to this and they haven't got some value out of that whole thirty percent of your oxygen juice by your brain, I don't know if they're going to get any value out of this because that's yeah. gold. It is. That is absolute gold. Yeah, it's crazy. And the the champion free divers, they actually they do those crazy depths. Mm. They actually close their eyes because they've actually got. They're connected to a rope, rope and yeah. I, I, you know, that's what we use and found in our studies as well. And just even closing your eyes, that's yeah, going to you're not looking at you're anything. not looking at anything and stressing out. So it's all just reducing the stress. And then you see Jack Robinson now; yeah. he's using the breath preheat to calm down. He is, so then yeah. he picks better waves, picks better decisions with his turns. You know, one minute to go, did it twice mm. to Medina. Oh. Clutch situation needs an eight, does it. Because he's getting focused, getting present with the breath. So there's so much you can do with the breath, you know. And not just surfing, you know. You've got an exam. You can do like a resonance breathing, we call. So four-second inhale, six-second exhale. Mm. Brings you in that real mm. nice, relaxed state. Heart rate date goes down. Blood pressure goes down. And you make better decisions. And that's like for all of us, and especially in the surf. Like, am I going to bail? Take a big breath, or I'm going to gun it and try and get over it. Yeah. So then, then you go, oh, okay, maybe I'm not going to make it. So I'm going to get calm and then take a beautiful deep breath, take the pounding, and I'm going to be fine. So yeah, just stopping that narrative in the brain of, of that scatter of I'm going to die. <laughs> 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 but that's generally where I'm living at, you know. And that's in two foot. No, <laughs> nah. But it's good, and then it's good seeing some of the crew, like you know, Maya. I mean, she's blacked out a few times. Yep. And the Sebastian. When I was at Nazare, just seeing these crew just charging and getting flogged, and they were just used to it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was my first time there, so I was. I, I didn't. I was thrown in the deep end, and um. Were you a little freaked out? Was yeah. your brain using up some oxygen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I was weird. I, I was lucky because I, I flew. I, I rang up Tim Benith and said, I'm coming to Nazare in two weeks. He goes, no, you've got to come tomorrow. It's swell of the year. Oh. So I asked my missus and she said, yeah, ask work. And they said, yeah. So I was just on a plane with a 10-2 and a tow board and a Stop. billabong um, CO2 vest that I never used in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wake up and then Toby Cunningham, nicknamed Toby Trouble, he knocks on my door with, with um, Tim and yeah. says, oh, oh, let's go. And I was like 20 foot and he just towed me in. Like I just got out of bed. I go, what about this and that? And he goes, no, I just wear my, where to use my board? I'll tow you in. I've had an epic three days. So then I, I was just thrown in the deep end, which is good. And then yeah. I was towing him, he's towing me. I'd have skis. Didn't have enough time to think about it. 20 years and then each day... 
um, and then he had to go tow lead in. So he goes, "You don't, yep. I can't tow you anymore. You have to get your own partner or own ski." So I paddled it one day from the harbour. It was heavy, like paddled that's a long paddle on my own. Like just had it in my head and just paddled. But at it. least you're not thinking I'm going to get chomped by a shark over there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what it feels like. It doesn't yeah. feel like there's any sharks there. No, it there's doesn't. There's got to be. There'd ha- there's heaps of sardines. The sardine. The sardine. It's bright Maybe there. they're just too well fed. They're not worried about But humans. you're so scared of the wave, you don't care about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I paddled around the corner. I've paddled from the harbour. It's probably yeah. a 30, 40 minute paddle. Easily. Come around the corner and just look to my right. Mm. And it was 60 foot and offshore. Like the most perfect peaks. Three peaks. There's peak one, peak two, peak three. Going off like the biggest beach break in the world. Kyle Lenny's out there with Chumbo yeah. and all those maniacs. They'd had a comp the two days before, uh. and I just was just like, "Don't be a pussy! Don't be a pussy! Just get one! Just get one! You got to get one!" Because I towed already and had uh, about yeah. forty waves. Yeah. But paddling's a different beast oh, out goodness. there. It's gnarly. So get round, and there's like hundreds of people on the cliff just wanting you to die. Yeah. <laughs> and then this Brazilian guy just feels something in my, like, this energy and I look over and there's a guy, like, next to me, like, just as we get around the corner and then we're paddling way out to sea just to suss out the lineup. I said, let's just get one each, eh? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we went in and then we're just sitting there and it was like the scene from Braveheart and this bombs is coming. And I said, don't paddle out. Just stay where you are. Let's Which Braveheart did you watch? There's no waves in my brain. <laughs> no, no. But you know when they're going, hold, hold, hold. Yeah, 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 hold. Yeah. So I'm doing this, going, hold. <laughs> anyway, spun and went. Yeah. He was on the yeah. inside. We went left. And as we were dropping down, I just had a look and he was too deep. And I just saw him get oh, no. obliterated. And then I just went off the bottom, just did a, like a little easy top turn and then another one and then just got out of yeah, it yeah, and just yeah, put yeah, my yeah. head down and pinned it out to, to see. Yep, yep, yep. Just because there was like sets coming uh, and it's just like, it's like... You get caught anywhere it's out like, there. It was 60 foot out the back face and then inside's 40 foot uh, like rips and yeah. just chaos. And then he disappeared. I was like, I couldn't, I can't go save him. Like, what can I do? No, what are you going to be able he's, to do? He's gone. I didn't see him. He's just disappeared. So then I got another easy one. Not the first one wasn't easy, the second one was, and then I just pinned it, went back out to sea, paddled back back to the car. N- it's not the- easier to, just to come in on the... I could have come in the beach, but then I was calculating it would have been even worse because my, bigger- my commo was there, but I would have had to go into the beach. Yeah, yeah, over that giant... I, what, walk about... Yeah. Oh, I would two have hours? Had, I would have had to walk two hours to the car, easy. so then I was easy to paddle back. Paddle back. And then the next day... Oh, yeah, the oh that Arvo, they're going... A few crew were saying, guess go and hire a mm, ski off Lino. Mm, mm. So I was like, so I go down and see Lino and he's like, yeah, he's a ski. And he's, he's a guy, he's just like he's semi-mafia, just walks around in Miller winter in boardies and a t-shirt. This Portuguese guy, legend dude. And he goes, yeah, this is how much it's going to be. Um, Man, I couldn't wear sh- shorts in summer over there. <laughs> <laughs> he like, gives me the ski. Oh, yeah, this is even funnier. The couple of boys who live in there go, hey, Matt, hire a ski, go out the back, we'll see you, we'll jump on your ski and tow you in. This is in the morning. I'm like, yeah, right. Like, as if that's going to work, like in my own head. Yeah. So I trusted them anyway. I had no choice. Yeah. I wasn't going to paddle it again and get just two waves. I wanted to be greedy and get <laughs> yeah. it back, you know. So then I went down, got the ski, and I said, do you want me to sign anything? He goes, no, 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 I know where you live. And I was like, oh, okay. Cool. And I said, what happens if I lose the ski? Or... And he goes, oh, we'll work it out later. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so anyway. Ha- got, I know a good surgeon <laughs> and, I, and I could use that kidney. <laughs> <laughs> so I paddled, uh, gunned it out on the ski, get out there. And Dave Langers, he's got this you know, bike, um, motorcycle moustache, like biking moustache. He's got a high-vis jacket on over his weddie. Comes flying at me with this crazy Russian guy called Andre Carr. Comes up and then he's like, um, Matty, I'm going to jump in your ski and tie you in. I'm like, oh, sick. And then he just got me six waves off the bat. Wow. Like, best way, biggest waves of my life. Glassy, 60 wow. foot. And I was just like, you don't know. I, I can't, I don't know how I can repay. He's like, nah, mate, you just tie me in next. And I'm like, all yeah. right. So I tie him in the next one. <laughs> he tries to pull into a barrel, gets clipped, loses his board. And it's on the. It's almost went into the cliff. So yeah. his mate goes in to get it, and then, um, then they go. Oh, I can borrow 
Matt, can you borrow, can I borrow your ski to go get the board? I'm like, yeah, right. Eh? So they go in, they disappear for 20 minutes. You're and then sitting I, and out then the I back. see him on the beach. Yeah, I'm sitting out the back on my board, <laughs> way out to sea, so far out. And, a t- and it's a tow board too. <laughs> yeah, it's not a tow board. It's not like you can paddle. Can't paddle. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I've had five best, biggest waves of my life. Lost a jet ski. I'm up for probably 15 grand. Or and, a kidney. Uh, he had a kidney. And <laughs> Leonard comes past and goes, where's the ski? I said, oh, Andre Carr and um, Dave Langer's have got it. He goes, what? They lose more skis in Nazare than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. So anyway, they came back out. And then we towed all day. Um, towed with multiple guys all day. And then actually towed Laird back to the harbour. That was He broke down on towed Laird back. It was like oh, an eight-hour cool. day. Went in um, and just packed everything up, and I just, um, I just all the adrenaline came out, and I just wow. was just like, all, like I started tearing up. Just yeah, going, what did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> and should have I done it? <laughs> so yeah, so we went on a bit of a tangent there. No, but that's I'm sure. But um, good stories. But good when stories. I was on the wave, it was in, it was so big and gnarly. I didn't want to fall. I was just looking through like a porthole. Mm. Like I wasn't looking around at any peripheral. I was just trying to – because you've got to go over these big bumps, yeah. and even though it's glassy. And that's almost like the concept of closing your eyes at free diver. Isn't yeah. It? In that porthole. Yeah. You know, so it was just shut a, down It was a weird mechanism that I'd never done before. It just mm. happened just to be – not to get down in that death zone and, and get totally destroyed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. And so, so that was an experience. Out. But that – that um taught me, you know, like the and then I went down that rabbit hole of of apnea training. Yeah, yeah, and then now I'm qualified. So and now I can bring that to the table from beginner, intermediate, advanced, and pro. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. coming coming back to your breath, um, to bring the anxiety down, make better decisions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's unreal. So yeah, breath, mate, it's huge. Bre- breath, yeah. Look, I think breath is obviously. And huge. I do I do breath hold. Like just for fun and and for my mental health, like every day, yeah, like right. I wake up, part of my routine, do it with my missus Shaz. So I'll just do ten to twenty minutes of like slow breathing, fast breathing, super ventilation breathing, breath holds, mm. and then bang, and it's like you're meditating in the bre- in the breathing, mm. and then if I've got time, I do a little bit of meditation at the end, and then go over surf, and then go to work, and you Mickey Mouse. But sometimes I'll miss that, and I won't be. I won't be so tuned in on that day. Won't be as sharp. Yeah, not as sharp. Yeah. Get a little more, re- more reactive when yeah. I don't do it, and when I do do it, I'm less reactive and like things don't bother me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're driving in traffic, someone cuts you off. You're like, yeah, yeah. sweet man, no worries, yeah. all good. Or, or you go for a surf and it's just no expectations. It is what it is. Yeah, and I think that that's a big point too. I mean, I was coached off Derek Hind as a kid. And that was a cool experience. And he said, never surf with any expectations. I was only 15, so I didn't really understand it. Mm. And as I got older, it wasn't until I was about probably 45 that I, <laughs> that I understood it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's the best thing, like not worrying, like as we were talking about before, about surf trips, don't yeah, worry yeah. about the forecast. Yeah. Obviously, you're only going to worry about to take, see what boards you're going to take. Going for a surf... It's only thing what's in front of you. You can only do what's in front of you. If it's yeah. two foot on shore and you've got a spare hour before work, what are you going to do? Sit on the bench and whinge about it or you on the beach or are you going to go surf? Yeah. That's and that's how you work out the puzzle. I think, I think that's like we talk about training and coaching and stuff like that. And I think, you know, we can do techniques and mm. we can do, you know, body movement and foot placement and all yep. of this stuff. But to be honest, things like managing expectations mm. – probably is the biggest one of the most important things to learn yeah as a person as a let person. alone for surfing but it's so important for surfing oh it's the like best. i live on the gold coast we're here now on the gold coast recording this podcast and i have to have that expectation management yeah really under control yeah because when you've got 400 people out at snapper on a good day that's me that means a Good crowd day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a thousand on a bad day. You just go. I just go out there with. I go out there to catch one wave. One wave, yeah. Mm. But that one wave, because it's such a great wave. That's why it's a world class wave. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's worth it. Yeah. Now, if I'm in a mood to not catch one wave, I'll go to my beaches. Yeah. And I can get a bit uh, on the Gold Coast. Yeah, you I can, can get a bank to you, myself. You just go bang, bang, bang. Yeah, you can just and go I, and back, and forth, be, back and forth, absolutely. back and forth. Yeah. It's not. Is it as good a wave as Snapper or Kira? No. 
or Burley. No. But your fun factor. But that's what I'm feeling like that day. So mm. I go and, and I've managed my expectation. What mm. do I expect? What do I feel like yeah. doing? And instead of like every time having to go to Snapper and just getting frustrated every time, yeah. I'm just like going, all right, well, I'm in the mood for just one real good one. I'll go to Snapper. Yeah. And I'll fight and that's, wait. That's and a good good point. It's a massive point. Yeah, yeah. And we get so caught up in our own heads. And you, you look and you're mind surfing. Before you paddle out, it is good to mind surf because you've sort of realised what you're going to do. But don't realise you're going to go and get the biggest and the best. No. Just go, I'm going to get one. It's one. And then, yeah, as you said, you've got a, a, a like a low period swell on a bank there's just heaps of waves and yeah, you just go yeah. and feast on that absolutely and you might do one turn it's a one and, turn and you're so happy absolutely absolutely and that's a massive thing and you know you see even guys you know trying to ride a high performance board and they're not ready yet or a girl of course um because their expectations are really high well and it's like you pick to boards to you pick boards to match hmm. that's but, the statement yeah. You pick boards to match. Yeah. Yourself and the Just conditions. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Your skill yeah. level yeah. and what the conditions are doing. Yeah. Now, do I like surfing males? No. Unless it's knee high to ankle high. Yeah. Then I have a blast. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm still yeah. riding the energy of the speed ocean. speed and... Yeah. Whereas if you're on your little short board and it's half a foot... It's, it's, it's sinking. It's going to be annoying. Yeah. It's no fun at all. <laughs> yeah, you're better off body bashing or riding a <laughs> mouth, yeah. Or riding a mouth. Yeah. Absolutely. Or the, there's the big movement towards um, foamies these days. Yeah, foamies. Oh, don't bring up foiling, mate. No, no, Sorry. No. I, <laughs> Good. <laughs> I've seen too many people scalped by them. Yeah, they're nasty. <laughs> they are. No, definitely. They've got guys and girls going out on foamies with no fins. Yeah. Different sizes. Yeah. <clears throat> Even when I'm teaching, big, like we'll get a school group, we we'll might have like 100 kids, 30 will do surf surf, D. 30 will do bodyboarding and 30 will do surfing because mm. it's no, you can't put 100 kids on surfboards. There's no, no way. No. And, um, and they rotate. These are just like a full beginners from a school group. Sure. And we'll get out and bodyboard. I'll be doing oh. the bodyboard because I'll tell the old instructors they have to do all three. Of course. And then I'll do all three too. Mm. And you get out in the bodyboards and you're just with these groms. You've got, we've got no fins. Like we're just pulling in and you're pulling in the closeouts, one, two foot closeouts, having a ball. Yeah. You can have the expectations so are just so lowered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then you just, you see um, so even many body bashing and body bashing, you know, it's so fun. Even when you're injured and you can't surf, you go exactly. for a body bash, you're so stoked rather exactly. than not doing it. So I think, yeah, that's it. As a, as a coach and then as a surfer, I try to bring that to the table a lot just no expectations yeah we're just bit we're just groms on a bit of foam that floats in water just remember that <laughs> and we're just playing out there that's it fun. we've got doing the weirdest you think about our sport that's weird we paddle out in this thing that floats and we spin around and catch it and do turns or whatever we want on it Sometimes get tubed. It is so weird. And we go back and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. It's unreal. It's a, it's a weird sport. Imagine the aliens looking down going, what are they doing? That looks fun. No, they're jealous. They're jealous. <laughs> or they've or they're probably got heaps better waves and better ports. <laughs> they're like, we're not... That's why we haven't been invaded by aliens yet. They've probably got they're mental yet. wave pools oh, yeah. and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> oh, they're like, oh, these guys... What are they doing? They might catch up soon. <laughs> when they do. Our waves are way better. Yeah, so that's huge. And like the point you brought up about equipment, yeah, match your ability and the, and the ocean. Mm. And, and don't worry what people think. Like, stop worrying about what, what people think of what you're writing. Like, it's you at the end of the day. Look, I think, I think we're in a, a really good position in surfing at the moment or a really good time mm. where so many crafts are accepted. Yeah. Not just... Um, put up with but accepted like mm. and everyone now everyone's quiver once upon a time your yeah. quiver used to be yeah a 6-0 a 6-1 and a 6-2 yep that was your quiver 18 and a half wide <laughs> two and a quarter <laughs> heaps of rocker <laughs> exactly glass slipper. everyone was trying to be like Slater and, the Kelly, and, and we, Kelly Slater glass slipper and yeah and not everyone can ride can no one there's not many people can surf like no. Slater like, and, and now you've got your little puddle jumper Small wave board, mm. you got a twenty and you got a thruster. Yeah. That's your quiver. And then you, and maybe throw a mallet in the, and there. The, and then some guns, yeah. Even it was cool seeing Slater in that, that comp here at Snapper, the Snapper World Champs heat. He rode a different board, rode a twenty with a, a twenty two plus one. Yeah. 
and he's, he was having fun. It looked, he actually it, rode that in the in event. In the comp too, yeah. Yeah, the Weber design. Yeah, he rode it in the event. And that was a weird decision for him. But he's won that. It doesn't matter for him. He's won that many world titles and he's done everything. He can ride whatever he wants. And he looked he like he was having so much fun. He was having so much flow. It, it looked good. Yeah, that board did look and good. And that's what it's supposed to do. And it's I, supposed I, to look good. It's subjective. And that's when on coach I always say, someone does a crazy turn and they, we're watching the footage later. And I always ask the question, how did it feel? Yeah. And they go, felt good. And I go, well, cool. That's yeah. what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Remember that feeling. Yeah. And why, why did it feel good? Exactly. And, that, and that's what we're chasing. You know, we're like little, like my little staffy that I'll take her down the beach and just throw a stick. She'll just go till I tell her to stop. We're just like that with our, you know, catching waves. We go out in yeah. our bit of foam and go, 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 till we can't do it anymore. We've got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it's one of the uh, one of the sports that has caused more job losses and relationship breakups than any yeah. other sport. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I, 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 I was that funny, Garth Dickinson. Used to work for me, and he was like on the he was doing the tour for a while, and then he became a qu- quickie pro, um, quickie free surfer in the nineties and two thousand. Anyway, he's teaching this lesson. I've got like thirty corporates. He's got this big beard. He's just come back from HT. He's living on a tent. He's cut, his hair's wild. He's you know he's very brown. He's skinny, and he's going. I'm the drug dealer. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, where's he? and this guy doesn't take drugs, he's healthy as. Yeah, he goes, I'm the drug dealer to all these corporate bankers, and they're looking this first day at the beach doing a surf lesson. He goes, I'm giving you the drug of surfing. Yeah, and he goes, after today, your life's ruined. You'll you won't yeah. be able to keep a relationship. You won't be able to keep a job. <laughs> so welcome. It's, it's worse than heroin. <laughs> and I say, wait till you get tubed, then it, oh, then you're really done. Then you're cooked. Then you're cooked. <laughs> but that's what's so cool about our sport. And you can, um, everyone, like my mates, don't even ask me what the surf's like because I always say it was fun. Yeah, that's right. And they're like, oh, that's right. We're not asking you anymore. Yeah, how was it? Cause no, it was fun. Because you're just, you're just trying to solve solve a puzzle. If it's one foot, you know, one to two foot and on shore, you're trying to get to your feet, getting speed and doing one turn. Absolutely. And you do one and you go, that was sick. Or well, it's a big day, you're trying to make the drop, make the line, trying to finish the tube or whatever. And every day is a different day. And that's what's so cool about it, eh? And it's all fun. And we've got to be grateful, like come back to that. Yeah. And not gratitude. get so caught up in our own headspace of, got to be better got to be better got to be better yep. running out of time running out of time and you just see people in the water and you just they oh got to get a wave because i got to go to work and um you know i haven't had any good waves lately because of this and that or they're on a surf trip i've spent t- 10 grand on this you know I'm, I've, I've only had 10 waves so far my goal was to get 100 to like okay calm down just everyone just calm down and just enjoy it yeah. just look around and what you got yeah and yeah. um, be grateful. So there's a, there's another really good surf coaching thing. Mm. Gratitude. Yeah. Be grateful for what you've got. And it was know? really cool. Jadson Andre talking um, at the Snapper Comp here in the Challenge Series when he got post-interviewed. And he said, I'm just so great. I'm not on the CT anymore, but I might get there. I might not. But I'm just so grateful that I can do this. Yeah. I can actually ride a board. I can ride these waves and I'm still doing it. Yeah. And that's that's so cool to hear rather than going, oh, I'm over this and rah, yeah. rah, rah. You know, and, and then you see someone who's got a disability or injured and it just brings you down to earth and going, I'm so lucky. I can yeah. paddle, my arms work, my feet work and get to my, you know, I can jump to my feet, I can go across and glide. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even if it, you know, the older you get, the thicker your boards get and the... Mm. The less radical your turns get, it it kind of doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. It just it's still. Yeah. I think there's something about riding the energy of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. that's what we're doing. Yeah, we're riding Definitely. the energy of the ocean, and it's so awesome. There's something in that that makes surf, that is what becomes so addictive to me. Yeah, surfing. it's full full addiction and a good addiction. Yes, like the right addiction. Mark Mark Healy said a cool thing about how a storm has generated. The swell that we're riding might mm. have come from a thousand kilometers away. Yeah, and we actually have we're so so um, oh, privileged 
to turn around and get that wave that's come from a thousand mm. k's and ride it till it's dies it's, it's dissipates awesome. exactly and you take that energy yeah. and that's why i think when we body surf or surf yep. or whatever yep. we come in and we're like geez i feel good yeah even it was terrible yeah like you feel better than if you didn't and it, and it, people go oh you know it's <coughs> good to get in the water but if there's no waves i don't feel good getting in the water Mm. It's weird, you know what I mean? There's <laughs> something about the energy that's in the yeah that energy, and even those has those crazy days when it's real windy and the birds are out and and you go, oh, maybe I will. Wait. Oh, okay, I'll go out. Yeah. And you go out and you come in and you look back and you go, how did I have that much fun out there? There's no it crowd. Looks terrible. Yeah, but yeah. Just yeah. all the the wind yeah, and yeah, the swell yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. even more energy going on. That's right. And you you're feeling it, aren't you? Absolutely. Well, I like what Parko said one time. <clears throat> He was quoted in a like, it's I surf because that yeah. was a big billabong campaign. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And his his one was because it only takes one good wave to make a session. Yeah, yeah. That's... And I've always thought about the fact that I only really remember my best wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get twenty waves. I kind of I go oh yeah. D- yeah it goes into oh. a blur. It goes into <laughs> this blur. What? But I, I always try and remember my best left and my best right if I'm on a beachy. Obviously, yeah. I'm not on a point. Yeah. But my best left and my best right. And then sometimes one turn that was really crispy. Or one good turn, yeah. It was really yeah, crispy, yeah. no wobble, and you're like, oh, that felt good. Because yeah. that's... And this is, without a word of a lie, I've been out at Snapper, and I've my I, within five minutes, I've paddled into an absolute bomb, ripped a bag in my version of ripping the bag, all the way down through into Greeny. I've I've paddled in. Yeah. Yeah, good call. Like, Fifteen minute session. <coughs> I, I remember Not even. One, I remember once I was sur- same yeah, I went out and I got one off the bat and um Mick was out there and his mate and they and I paddled back out and yeah. they're going, I can't believe they said you can't believe you paddled back out. After that. And I go, Yeah, I think I blew it, eh? I should have just gone <laughs> she in. Just, and she just and lived on that. I, I should have, because yeah. I went straight back from <clears throat> that emotions at Snapper, yeah. if you're not a local. Yeah. And, you know, the locals do you know, they they, they got a co- they cop a lot. And they yeah. should be entitled to all those ways. <laughs> yeah. I'm a blow in. And um you get in the scraps and then you get a good one and you're like, Wow and the emotions go you're paddling in that current and you've got 40 people next to you and you're just like semi-angry in your own head that you're not showing it and then you finally get one. And there's and a then, level and of frustration, then, definitely. And, and then the level, you just go, you're so elated because you got like a... Banger. You know, 300 metre ride. Yeah. And then you go back and then it happens, and then you're back in this turmoil and you're just yeah. like, wow. Oh. And you're only hoping that you get another one. Hoping someone falls otherwise, off, yeah. Otherwise you finish your session... In yeah. turmoil. And that's why I love D bar because you can yeah, just D-bar go bang, just bang, 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 bang. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to paddle back out of D bar to get another one, no problem because you will get another one. But snapper, snapper is very different, especially if it's a mid range swell and no one's falling off or the locals aren't falling off. <laughs> you got nothing. <laughs> You're gonna get nothing. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Well, let's move on now. I want to. I want to know if there's just that one simple thing you could. That a surfer can do, yep. That will help them improve their surfing. Any anything, not how your feet are, not how you paddle, whatever. Could be paddle, could be anything. But what's that one thing that they should? I, is is there a silver bullet, Matt? Give me my silver bullet. There's not many silver. I mean, there's a lot of silver bu- bullets, <laughs> and it depends on your age. So if you're middle aged, intermediate coming up. I would say the biggest tip for them is hip mobility. Yeah. To getting that front foot through on the oh. drop. Because as we know, we've got to, that's the thing about surfing. We've got to catch the wave first. Yeah. It's not like snowboarding where you go up in the lift and you fall, get back up. <laughs> You've got to go out, get it, and then time it to get to your feet at the right time and then generate speed. So I reckon if first off is just get the hips mobile yeah. and, and you can do it on land. Okay. So if you can replicate that pop up movement, yep. And if you if your hips aren't that great, just work on mobility exercises. So you, when you do go to your feet, you're going to jump up straight away, nice and quick, and land in the right spot. So when the surface compass is out, yeah, I'll be able to get that on my app, won't I? Yeah, the, definitely. The hip mobility. It's yep. going to be on the app. Yep. Oh yeah, perfect. All yeah, right, beautiful. Going to that on the app. So I'll, we'll test. Even on the beach, I'll test people 
their hip mobility and then I realize, oh, okay, that's why you're not getting up correctly. You need mm. to do two hours. I mean, I, you know, like probably five hours a week of just, just doing hip mobility, ankles, strong core and, um, and being good at your paddling. So that's, that's the big key. I think everyone's just looking at everyone ripping. <clears throat> like obviously the high level pros, they don't have to worry. Mm-hmm. It's more the people that are getting older. So mm. after a while, the body's starting mm. to get a bit of rust in the joints. Um, they're probably sitting at their desk too much. Well, that is the thing I, <coughs> do, I do know about um, um, surfers. Most surfers, the thing they're getting surgery on isn't shoulders. Mm. It's hips. It's hips, yeah. Actually, Neil that's, Ridgeway from Rip Curl yep. got his hips done. Someone else I was talking to getting their hips done. That's what... um. Actually, what you're saying, that's what scared me because I know BL had hip surgery and even yeah. Duma. Yeah. And they're, 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 I think they're about five, six years older than me and I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy. So I just went gnarly into hips. Yeah, right. Doing pigeons, indo squats and everything. And everything's just so... Okay. And I was like... This is a very good tip for anyone listening. Yeah, like I was like... Hips. Hips are massive because we're putting... So, even Kelly recently. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're putting so much stress. Mm. And if you're just doing the one movement, and, and the thing is, we're goofy or natural. Mm. So a lot of the training I do, like physical training, it's like we don't do, we sort of do a lot of slow movements, fast movements, but it's not about killing yourself like cardio. Yeah. You get so much cardio in surfing anyway. Yeah. It's you want to be strong and mobile. Yeah. So you want to be able to do a push up and get your feet to land under it. So it's like a burpee, but landing in a surf stance. And if you're surfing, you know, like Duma and Barden and those guys surfing tiny waves, if you look at it, they surfed know, all those back, t- in back in the day. They had to. There's no waiting periods. They're on the next, you know, they're in mm-hmm. Japan. Mm-hmm. They're in America surfing one, two footers. They've got it best four waves. So they're surfing their bodies like to rack and ruin. And there's no training back then. There was no yeah. stretching, no movement. And now those guys are doing it. Um and everyone's doing it now. So that's what happens. And, and if, if you, when you do your exercises, you actually got to do it in a different stance. Yeah. Because it's like you're going goofy, you know, 40 years. There's yeah. going to be some problems with your body. Yeah. With your, your neck, you know, your hips, your back. So if you balance that out and just do it on a regular basis and coming back to play, yep. not making it hard. Yep. Um, there's that good book, um, James Clear, because Atomic Habits, you know. Go and do something. You just say, I'm going to do it for two minutes. Uh-huh. And then it might turn into 10. It yep. might turn into 15. But you say, I've got to go do an hour. You yeah. won't do it. It's too much. So, and you've got to just do it. You it's know, like eating an elephant. Yeah. One bite at a time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not and one it, mouth. Or you can't, you yeah, can't yeah, swallow you the whole can't. thing. No. And if you're, say, you're sitting at your desk on the computer for an hour, get up, do a bit of movement. Mm. Two mm. minutes. Mm. Go back, back to your computer. Mm. Don't just sit in that one spot. You're driving mm. a car, pull the car over. Do a little mm. bit of movement, mm. go again. Mm. Just little tiny tips, just and it all adds up. Like yeah. you're saying, like the elephant. People think, oh no, I've got to train at this specific time, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do it in an hour, and it's too hard. You don't do it. Whereas yeah. if, if you just do, a little they end bit, up doing nothing as opposed to a yeah. little bit. And a I'll little do, bit's better than nothing. A little bit's better than nothing. And like even at, at night, I'll be just. I've got a mat. Like it's like a. It's just a. It's called a muscle muscle mat, and it. It looks like a normal mat, but it's nice and spongy. I've got yeah, it in right. my lounge room, so I can just be hanging with the family. Mm. I'll just be talking and rolling around like a monkey, and you know. <laughs> then I'll sit back on the couch again. It's probably my ADHD. <laughs> yeah, and then it all adds up. Then of I'll, course, before I go, I'll go catch a wave. Like I'll do a bit of a warm up before I go out. Not a gnarly warm up, just a quick five minute. I might catch a wave, come in, run around to the rip before yeah. I paddle the rip. Do yeah. a couple of movements. Yeah, jump back out. Yeah. You do an hour of surf, you've done movement and surfing and you haven't trashed your body. You know? Yeah. And you just... Or, all, st- or stolen a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what we are very Yeah, time we're time poor, poor especially yeah. living what we've got to do these days, like, <laughs> you know, paying bills, inflation and all this sort of stuff, work. Yeah. We've got to do it, you know, so we don't have all that luxury. And obviously the breathing's good because it makes you more relaxed, which we talked about before. Mm. So mm. when your body's relaxed, mm. you know... Minds relax, bodies relax, and your body starts to not be so stiff. You know, yeah. you see those poor, and 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 having a grown mindset too. Yeah, you have a grown mindset where you don't think 
let things bother you too much, you're not going to get. You're not so rigid in your day to day. Yeah, see, there's something there, isn't it? Mm. The the mind is so very, very powerful, isn't it? You know, mm. you, you when you believe something, it kind of happens. It's a yeah, yeah, almost a self fulfilling prophecy yeah. type of thing. You know, if you Tense all the time. Your body's going to be tense. You're going to be rigid. You're not yeah. Going to be and and, and, and you see it. You see it like some like would you see someone who's a good free surfer mm. and they're not a good competitor, sure. and they go out in the heat and they stiffen up. They look like a totally different surfer. Of course, because all the stress. Yeah. Whereas the, the top level, some people are born to be competitors like Slater, where he can, you know, not be stressed by the whole, Absolutely. you know, the heat, how many waves, how many points, mm-hmm. all this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's also what we do in the breath training. It's called the mind, body, breath feedback loop. So you can always go around and keep going around. So your body feels a bit tight. Okay, I'm going to start breathing. Oh, now I'm going to start moving. Mm. Oh, my mindset feels better. Mm. You know when you're sick and injured too and mm. you, your body feels crap, you know. Yeah. you got creaky joints and you're stiff and you're a bit grumpy and, um, you know, because – you're not yourself and then you get yeah. into full health and you're like wow i'm just bump you know jumping out of my skin yeah absolutely so you know on that all that sort of stuff um cold water therapy is pretty good i find that's pretty good just you don't have to have an ice bath you can have a cold shower as long as you get cold yep i find that's good to um well, that's what I always think about how how surfers seem to have a lot longevity with their health than most people because yeah. they're kind of having a cold bath every morning. They're having a cold bath, and they're also just like that dog chasing the stick. Like yeah. we're just going out chasing the yeah. waves. Yeah. We're not in the gym looking at oh when's yeah. this over? Yeah, I got to do ten reps. Oh, that's what I always 10 say. Ten sets, you know. Put a footy in my hand and I'll run for an hour. Get me a, put some sneakers on, and go for a run, and I'm nah. done in twenty nah, minutes. Done. Same. I hate running. <laughs> I hate all physical fitness <laughs> forms. But as I said, you put a soccer ball at my feet, a foot yeah. in my hands, a surfboard skateboard. under my arm, a skateboard, and hours. Yeah, and that's like, it was cool when I did started jiu-jitsu like mm. 20 plus years ago. Um, it's like surfing. So you're trying to predict the future. So, you know how we're trying to, when we paddle into a wave, we're like, what's this going to do? And you're trying to predict... Well, before that. Yeah, before that. Because you're like looking, where's, yeah, where's yeah. that wave going to peak up? Yeah, where's it going to break? Gonna, where do I paddle towards it? Do it, I spin? Know, do I have to go wide? Do I have to go deep? I reckon there's another one going to come over there. Yeah, or, is, or do I go the second wave? This I'm going to... Yeah, second or third wave. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or you How get awesome. it right. And but, it's um, a banger. And that's the same as jiu-jitsu. You're, like, you're, you're wrestling this guy or girl and then they do something and then you're like, okay, what are they going to do next? What, what can I do next? And then yeah. sometimes you predict it, sometimes you don't. Yeah. So you just, you're just in this crazy roll with someone for five minutes and it's just time to stand still. Mm. Someone's trying to choke you out or break your arm or your, or your ankle. So you're protecting that or you're trying to get them. It's this cool little game mm. and that's why it's, people get addicted to it too because mm. it's – like surfing, but we don't obviously. It's surfing's way better for me because I love the um the whole being in the ocean and yeah, feeling yeah. the energy we talked yeah, about. Yeah. But it's a good replacement, you know, because yeah, you're yeah, moving the yeah. body and these using your feet they lefts also, and rights. But they also talk about how when you are uh, you battle that closely with a person, it does something mm. like there's an endorphin or something. Yeah, that, there's a chemical that definitely yeah. that happens in that as well. And mm. I, I, I would imagine it's very similar. Uh, to what you get from the uh, ocean, for sure. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah, that, and that's why coming back, <coughs> it was good doing jujitsu too, because I went like being a coach and competing and all that. You kind of, I wasn't the top of the tree, but you kind of, you've mm-hmm. got, mm-hmm. you just, you've got skills. It's been a surfer for thirty years, mm-hmm. and then you go to jujitsu and you're like a kook, like you're full <laughs> yeah, beginner yeah, again. Yeah, so yeah. it was really good for me as a coach to, and I tell them my. Mm-hmm my staff that work for me go and do a sport that, that you've, you've never, done. never done yeah and see how it feels to be to be a beginner be again. right at the bottom yeah, again it's and, good... it, and it's unreal so humbling mm, like in, um, but then then you can coach well because yeah because you've been humbled and you know how they feel then. yeah 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 and that was so cool my coach was um yeah he was super like super respectful and nice and he still is and that's how i teach people when they come to the surf school Treat everyone how you'd want to be treated. Yeah. No ego. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have any ego. Leave your ego at the door. Yeah. yeah. And just see people as who they are. Yeah. And yeah. And that's what 
the jujitsu was good because we do stuff like we were talking before and you were talking about Bruce Lee and we call it drill to kill. You do something that's really boring and you just keep doing it to perfect mm. it, to perfect it, perfect mm. it. And then br- bring that into my coaching. Like if I've got an elite or not even elite, like elite or intermediate and might say, look, I'm going to coach you on bottom turns for the next month. I know it's going to sound boring, mm. but if you work out your bottom turn, top turn is going to be easy. Mm. You know, and then you're doing movement in the gym. You might do movement drills that are good for your hips that are going to help you pop up. So you've done 20 of those in the gym, in the class, and that's there's 20 waves. And then mm. you're doing shoulder stability so you don't blow your shoulders out, so you're not in, you're not in hospital for six months. Like We mm. do all this kind of different stuff like mm. prehab and, and also strength and conditioning, but you're also getting the body so you can surf for your whole life. <laughs> yeah, that's the key, isn't it, about surf for your whole life? You know, we all hate being injured. As, as it's the worst thing ever, like yeah. being a surfer. Yeah. So <clears throat> one of the things we were talking about before off air, and yep. that was the thing you do the most when surfing. Yeah, paddling. paddling. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any tips you can yeah. give our listeners about yeah. paddling? I've got to... I mean, they, no, they no. all can't have a six foot four arm span yeah. like I do. <laughs> yeah. Or Owen Wright, like Owen Wright. Yeah, Owen. You and Owen. <laughs> you mean and Owen. <laughs> Although he is six, he's six foot three with a six foot four span. I'm six foot with a six foot four wow, arm span. Wow, that's yeah. sick. Yeah, it makes, makes yeah, paddling makes, easy. It does, it does. However, that's, I know there's things that I've done to fix up my technique. and Yeah, it's, it's good. It, it's so good to come back to the basics. Again, because as we know, 90, 90 to ninety five percent of surfing is paddling, mm. and I'll, I'll teach beginners. And this has been—it's actually good being a beginner coach. I still do beginner coaching because you don't lose touch with it, mm. and I still love seeing the stoke of someone getting up yeah, to their feet course. for the first time. But a thing that through jujitsu and surfing and beginner coaching really came to mind. When I've got someone with no core, so I've got someone in the water. So I've got two people in the water. Yep, I've got. They're both 80 kilos. Yep. And I'm pushing them on waves and telling them when to stand up. Like, push them on, go, stand up now. Yeah. I've got someone with no core. Yeah. Um, no strength and might be a little bit overweight. They're 80 kilos. Then I've got 80 kilo gymnast, mm. like a gymnast girl or a dancer. Mm. When I push that dancer on the wave, she might feel 60 kilos, even though she's 80. Same weight, yeah. The, the other the guy or girl will feel 100 to 110 yeah. because they don't make their body light. So if you can make yeah. your body light, so when you go in the water, just a good tip, um, obviously arch your back, engage your core yep. and then engage your glutes, which your butt muscles, yep. and then lift up. And then you're only on that part of your belly yeah. and you're nice and light yeah. and you just glide through the water yeah. and then start getting into the rhythm of your paddle, like pulling through the water real close to the rail little bit of a elbow lift the elbow up a little bit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just get in as the water as you're coming through that rail through the water the other hands in the air and that's nice and light yeah so you light in the air heavy through the water yeah right eh? cuz you see and that's another thing like you see I've taught footy players and they're like they've got biceps and they've got arms four times the size of mine yeah but they can't paddle no obviously they haven't surfed their whole lives but they they're really heavy in the air, yeah. And you see those, bo- you see guys in bodybuilders out in the water too, and you go, that guy must be a sick paddler. And then you see him, and he's just like, Can't he's like nuts. lead, yeah. So put technique too, and start yeah. using, and even when you flick off a wave on the way back out, don't paddle back lazy, paddle back with like those things in mind, conscious of yeah. what what my hands doing, what my my core's doing, what my glutes are doing, legs together. So obviously when you Start as a coach, you know, teach you say that the cues legs together, arch the back. Yeah. So when you get the back arch, you get that nice leverage over the shoulder. Yeah. Because it's different to swimming. When you're swimming, you're nice and flat, but when you're paddling, you've got that back arch. Yeah. And well, then you don't by, need to be flat. Your board's flat. Yeah, your board's flat. And then when you clench the glutes or the butt cheeks, that protects your lower back as well and you'll get less back pain. There you go. But you'll skim through the water. Yeah. And, you, you know, I've, that's just been over years and of us being a coach and also. Like I started coaching when I was 13 with Mark Warren, so it was pretty crazy. So wow. being, yeah, Mark Warren got me a job at the surf school at, at Ring, uh, Ringer Council, it was back then, in 1983. 
so I was always through beginners and then I started becoming a senior coach with them and then I went out and started my own business when I was about 25 but being around beginners intermediates advanced and then going to Chopa with Hedgie in 2014 when he got that 10 point ride I was sitting in the channel that day and it was psycho there was tow waves that day mm. that was so heavy yeah and I'm watching some surfers go over the falls yep just not even just get just a couple of paddles and then jumping to their feet like high level in the CT. Mm, mm. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but they were going over the falls. I'm like, wow. And then I see Slater just, I'm right there. Like I'm pretty much 20 foot away from him where he paddled into this wave. And I just saw him paddle and just had that back arched, still head, you know, core engaged, glutes mm. engaged. And he's just powered down this wave and just jumped up effortlessly and they just gone straight into a no hand tube and just pumping in the tube and he was so calm and it was like a 12 footer mm. and i was like wow and then i saw then he paddled past me i watched his paddle mm. and then not, later on i saw john john paddle past me and then i watched the other guys were going over the falls and i went back and wrote him a notepad my coaching notepad mm. Paddling, paddling, paddling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. This is the key. Like we all forget. We get to this level and we go, oh, I can, I can catch a wave. I can get to my feet. Yep. I can do a top turn bottom yep. turn. Oh, I don't need to know about paddling anymore. No. And I, I remember myself. Like I remember paddling out being real lazy. I'd catch a wave and just paddle back like a sloth, <laughs> you know, some days when you're yeah. feeling not that good. And um, and then, yeah, yeah, just bringing that into it. And I, I went and took a bunch of kids that are, you know, high level surfers come like 15 year olds for their for their age yep and i took him in the lake just before there's a little lagoon at long reef just yep. right near the the waves like half 30 second walk i took him in there and went through paddling drills yeah and they thought i was crazy and then i just said look this is the most important yeah. thing and then i said and then i said look yeah you, you got that problem you got that problem you got that yeah, problem yeah, yeah. If you want to be top level, like I just saw Slater, I saw John John, I saw Hedgie mm. getting 10 point rides because they can paddle well. Yeah. So it was a big more eye opener there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and it's pretty important, isn't it, paddling? Like, yeah. You don't catch waves without paddling. Yeah. You don't get out without paddling. Yeah. And that's where you we forget. We're just thinking yeah. about all everything on the top turn and the. Yeah, the carve, which is great, but if you can't get to there, you just might as well give it up, go and play volleyball <laughs> or golf or golf. <laughs> Oh, Maddie, that's been brilliant. Yeah. Um, I think we'll I think we'll pull it up there. Yeah, for so sure. So many things we're talking about. Some really good things about breath and mindset and paddling. Yeah. And uh, mindset's huge. Mindset's huge. So yeah, Matt, thanks again, thanks, mate. And uh, guys, thanks for listening and tuning in again next time. <laughs>